Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2023 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Founder and Festival Director, in conversation with the filmmakers, Buddy Terry and Linus Una, behind the film Split Jury, which is part of the upcoming program at the 2023 Global Film Festival, for which you can find out more information by visiting peacefilmfest.org. And now let's welcome Linus and Buddy. Hello, so lovely for you to join us. Hi, Linus and Terry. So let's start excited. out. Hi. Excited to be here. Great, we're, we're excited to have you. So uh, let's start out, tell everybody a little bit about Split Jury and Linus, since you since you chimed in first, let's start with you and maybe you can pick up on anything that you want to add to what Linus has to say. Okay, sounds good. Um, Split Jury is centered around Takuma Jackson, who was um, a formerly incarcerated man. Um, sorry, let me take that quickly. Split jury centered around Takuma Jackson, a formerly incarcerated man in Oregon who was um, incarcerated under Oregon's non-unanimous jury rule, which has been there for over 80 years until 2020. He sort of follows him on this journey as he seeks justice for himself and hundreds of people who were impacted by this rule. Yeah, but he can talk a little more about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much sums it up well. Um, the general scope of the film is it's focused around TJ's story and his sort of lived experience. That's the lens that we've taken in the film. Uh, but what really drew us into the story was the law and to the fact that Oregon and Louisiana are only two of are two of the only 50 states that have this system in place or have ever had it in place. Um, so that immediately stood out to us, and that's really where we decided to dive in. And that's um, certainly an interesting, uh, but not a an often discussed aspect of uh, of our justice system. What um, you know, and it and it opens up a lot of of discussion of of what the role of the jury system is in terms of of you know, hopefully creating a just result and not just simply an expedient one, wherein, um, and, and just to underline for, for everyone who's, uh, who's listening at home, what is meant by split jury is the non-unanimous. And I don't think a lot of people realize that, that in Oregon and in Louisiana, that was the case, that, uh, that it could be 10 jurors could send, could severely uh, change someone's life, even though two people were not convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so could you talk about what drew you to this particular topic? And we'll start with you, buddy. Sure, yeah. Um, like you said, I mean, the on a very broad level, a jury of one's peers is like a, it's been a pillar of, you know, the United States legal, you know, ju judicial system for time and memorial um, and is still like, today is valued and is held in very high regard and even on international standard. And that's something that Linus and I ended up talking about a lot throughout the production. Um, so as an Oregonian myself, you know, growing up, spending my formative years in the state, I was shocked and um, quickly, um, I, I would say disappointed to learn that, you know, my home state has had this on the books for nearly a century. Um, and then to learn why uh, it was there was even more disappointing, but only only served to kind of reinforce, um, you know, the knowledge that I have about what the state was 50, you know, 60 years ago um, and how laws were created and, you know, politics were sort of in influenced at that time. So that's really what drew us in um, initially. And then, uh, yeah, I think, you know, Linus can further speak to the people that we started to get to know um, after the, the, the topic. Um, thanks, buddy. I guess I'd say just to quickly add as well that both of us are like very strong, I would say strong students of history. 
we are both heavily fascinated by history and um i guess like really love it when especially like for younger people like us i mean the younger generation there's always that um propensity for people to like move on super quickly and forget the past and i mean people sometimes forget that most of what we see the present day realities in the society is heavily intertwined with the past and an understanding of the past is really crucial to making sense of what we see like in, in like present day society say for example i mean the split jury thing like happened in, in the 1930s and still impacts people on, up until this very day and so it just shows how important history as a subject is and one that society as a whole need to pay very close attention to and i guess also like um during the entire research process um like with every film there's like a very interesting topic a subject but also what makes it even like a film is the characters in there and i guess um throughout that process i mean one name that kept popping up in like throughout the entire research was um the law professor louis and clark law school eliza kaplan and through Eliza got to meet TJ, where Eliza has been after she moved from New York um, to Portland and learned about this, was totally outraged and began to fight it. And I mean, we saw um, in her story, like a very passionate liar and professor who, who really understood how unjust this system was and was willing to never let go until she changes that. And that i mean once we met eliza we knew there and then that there's a powerful story to tell here oh that's that is uh a, an amazing way to uh to think about what's important about that particular film that this person uh dedication to uh to bring justice and equity and and that leads me to the my next question is you know for people who haven't seen split jury yet but i really recommend people seek it out you you not only look at the film in terms of the history behind the particular policy but you also look at uh through particularly this one lawyer's work you look at the policies that need to be put into place that go beyond merely changing from unanim non-unanimous to unanimous and can you know linus we'll stop we'll start with you what was important about including that ongoing policy discussion? I guess um, we got into the film like at a very crucial moment. We'd almost say it's like every filmmaker's dream to get into like a subject matter when everybody's like almost like awaiting that, that decision that would change people's life. And so we got into the film when everybody was waiting for the decision of the Oregon Supreme Court. And there and then we knew how important it was to, I would say in quote, like bear witness to history. It was, we understood the weight that carries. We understood the importance of being able to document this hit moment of history in, in Oregon's history. And to be able to like document and keep that, not just for people who are presently there, but for future generations to grow up and see that. But those are people who also want to get into like um, lawyering. I mean, to look at the film in its simplicity, I mean, and understand um, the complexities around like the justice system and why there's been this persistent calls for several years for reforms. And so I would say it was, it was almost like a filmmaker landing, like finding gold. We came in when um, this discussion was heavily ongoing. The media has done like a lot of coverage. I mean, print coverage, particularly in Oregon and by extension, even Louisiana as well. Because I mean, Louisiana did vote to end the practice in, in 2018, but then the issue of retroactivity was still there, which is what do you do to all the people that have been convicted by this rule for several decades? And so we knew right then that from the very start that this was a very crucial moment like to get into the film. And it was a process that we were extremely committed to follow because we knew every day counted, every minute counted because people were waiting for this decision. Whether it's people who are still in prison, people who are out of prison but still have felonies on their record, advocates who have been fighting to, to change this law for several years, 
even families who have people that, that were impacted by this rule as well. And so, and as well, I mean, to, like you see in the film, the other side, I mean, victims who, crime victims who are anxiously waiting as well for the decision. So there's like a lot of dimension to, to this whole issue. There's like a lot of people who are impacted, a lot of people who are anxiously waiting for the decision. And we knew from the very beginning, like I said, um, that we, we had stumbled on gold. And it was one that we couldn't um, even like let our attention sleep for like a, for one minute. But you can um, chime in and like, you know, elaborate more. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you pretty much nailed it, but I would add um, that because so much of this has happened in the past, I mean, we knew at some point throughout the filmmaking process that the Supreme Court was going to make a decision. And that was really like the climax of the film. Um, so we knew we were going to get that, but this also posed a big challenge because so much of this battle has happened in the past and you can't, you know, and, and it's also happened, I, I would say like not in the shadows, but it's just been an ongoing legal thing. So, you know, how do you show that? Uh, that quickly became a big obstacle for us. And when you watch the film, that's why you see like in the first four minutes, there's so much exposition. I think that's, that ultimately ended up being the biggest thing we wrestled with is like, to your, to your point, like, what all do we include here? Like, do we include the various bills that were proposed, that were amended, that didn't pass, you know, in the years up to 2018? Um, you know, in between those sort of like very nuts and bolts things that are absolutely important. And in the larger picture, like you, sh you know, I would advise people do a little bit more research about, especially if you're in the legal side. Um, but like Aliza was behind all that work too. And so much of that ended up getting cut out just because, I mean, honestly, for expediency, because we needed to get the the viewers into the actual story story versus, you know, the topic. It's always, yes, that's, that's always um, uh, uh, something that filmmakers or any storyteller is wrestling with how much, how much information to go into. And what we really hope um, is that films like yours will spark people's interest. And, you know, that after they've seen it, they'll sit up a little taller in their seat and say, what can I do? Where can I learn more information? Why is this important in my own community? And so certainly this is, this is a story that affects two states out of 50. But what would you say are the lessons, you know, because it's important as a part of our mission, um, you know, for, for people to engage these films um, in ways that, that they can bring back into their own lives and their own communities. What are some of the ways that you would you you know that you would hope people would take away about the importance of the legal system in general, even though you are looking at a topic, a specific aspect of two states? Yeah, I can go first. I guess um, sometimes it just helps a bit to like tell a little story. Um, and I would say before I move to the U.S. from Nigeria, I mean in the media in particular, if there's one thing you hear very often is um, advocates and like um, critics and sometimes even legal practitioners themselves often calling for criminal justice reform. Honestly, I mean, I, I didn't understand what that meant. I knew like reform, reform, you need to change, but sometimes asking the question, what exactly is wrong with the justice system? Um, and it's one question I know, being a journalist myself, um, as consistently asking why, why do we always have this call? Why is this call really important? And I guess um, even with all my education, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I just know you hear that whenever you switch on TV and eventually, I mean, when I started working on this topic with Buddy, I saw very clearly, this was a very classic example of why these calls have been there, not just, not just in the US, but across the globe. I mean, in Nigeria, with Nigeria including as well. And I guess one big lesson, I think, even from a very personal perspective, would be that around us, um, every day, you know, every month, every year, there's a lot of legislation, a lot of bills, like, get moved, I mean, get up, 
approved or passed by the parliament or like the legislature and it becomes law a lot of that happen every day and sometimes because these things do not like reverberate in our communities or they do not affect people around us it's super easy to like lose sight of what is happening in society as a whole and i guess this is one very good example of that and i guess um from the very start of the process till the very end pretty much everybody we talk to I, I would say I'm not sure we met someone we ever told about the film that would say, oh, I know this was happening. Everybody you, we, we, we spoke to about this film would be really surprised, very shocked that something like this has been going on. And it just says so much about how we as a society, we as communities sometimes do not pay very close attention to all of what is happening around us. And I guess with this film, it's, it's, it's like a very big call to to really like you know step back for one minute and look closely at all of the policies and laws that are made every day and think of like how that would um the the, the implications the policy implications whether for like us as like a family as individuals as communities as as a, as a state at large and when we begin to almost like take a three dimensional view if you want of every piece of legislation of every law that get passed really helps us like look at it like on a bigger scope on a scale that like extends beyond our families on a scale that extends beyond our neighborhood our cities and we are able to like make connections between the laws and individuals around us and split jury as a film i would say it's like a wake-up call it's like a wake-up call to pay very close attention to not just what is happening within our city, but that is a stack. But also like in our states and, and, and to the Federation as a whole. Yeah, and I guess Buddy can add even more. There's just so much to say. Yeah, um, just, you know, one, one quote that I always, you know, kind of bring back up when talking about the film is what Eliza said, and I think she said it so beautifully. It's, you know, laws are based on reaction. Um, they're a reaction to, you know, whatever the state is in society at whatever level you're talking about, whether it's, you know, the federal level or something that's more community based. And so just like Linus said, I think the call to action here is like, if you do identify something within your community or a certain level of society, your town, your city um, that isn't working or that you find unsettling, like, you know, do some research and find out where it actually comes from. Why is that? Why is that a thing in in your area? You know, what what set it into motion in its conception in its earliest days, and then from that point, you can learn hopefully how to you know change or amend it for the better. That is such an important point uh, that both of you have been making about about how important it is to to learn about the laws in your own communities and your own, uh, you know, from municipalities to states to federal law um, and learn how to do something about it. So how can people watching this interview and who see the film, how, how can they support this film and your work? And also what's next for both of you? I guess if I would start um, and what he can <laughs> continue from here would be, in terms of really supporting our film, I would say it's like it's important to like support the issue first, because this is like you see with the test card at the end of the film, retroactivity is still like a very big issue in Louisiana up until this very moment. I think um, two months ago, uh, a lawmaker there tried like passing a bill, getting a bill through like the um, state legislature, but that failed. And essentially, it's trying to Louisiana. I mean, the backstory is Louisiana voted in 2018 to to ban the practice, but again, retroactivity did not apply. I mean, and people who were impacted by these cases, um, it's like going forward, this wouldn't happen again. But what happens to the people that have been affected by this over the years? And it's still like an ongoing issue, still an ongoing debate in in Louisiana. One that I think people in the United States need to pay attention to really closely um because the the recent attempt i mentioned in the legislature didn't go through where 
monitoring that really closely and even thinking at some point, maybe there's like a follow-up film there, uh, but that, that, that fell through. And it's, it's one that we continue to monitor closely and one that I think we're, in terms of even call to action to whoever sees this film, it's really pay attention to what is happening in Louisiana because this, this is no longer an issue in Oregon, but still is in Louisiana. And in Louisiana, Thankfully, there's some record that, that showed that um, 1,500 people were impacted by this practice. And so what happens to all of these people if, if the state continues to deny them access to a fair trial? Buddy? Yep, that, um, that's, that's the big one. Um, and I would also add that, you know, as per some, some recent reporting on what's happening in Oregon too, um, this is not, um, without spoiling the film, like retroactivity is still, it's complex, right? The, the reality is that even though a decision has been made, um, things take time to process, um, and the legal system is slow and bogged down. Um, so, you know, there's, that's still an ongoing thing. And I think additionally, you know, there are a number of other issues that kind of funnel into this. The one that I find myself talking to people out about almost immediately after we talk about this um, is the public defender crisis. And that's not something that is um, exclusive to Oregon or any specific state. Like that's, um, that's a pretty broad issue. And it's something that's getting talked about more and more because the, the reality is like, you know, when these kind of cases come up, there's someone, you know, you have a right to a trial, you have a right to, you know, defense, but that defender only has so much bandwidth and it's not necessarily a fault of theirs. Um, but that system, the way that's set up is a component that's led to a lot of what we're dealing with, with, you know, and trying to unpack in the film. So I think that's something that should also be on people's radar. Um, because it's also, it's a very big issue that is seeking resolution as well. Oh, those are, those are, uh, incredible points to bring up and, and buddy, yes, if, uh, uh, we are supposedly guaranteed a defense, but if it is not funded properly, uh, it doesn't feel as if that, that right is, is fully realized, uh, you know, if you, if you can't actually make get the kind of defense that that um that defends you that that uh maintains your rights in law so that's a great point to to close on uh, thank you uh, linus and buddy this has been very insightful discussion uh i think everyone who's watched uh must surely uh be thinking a lot about their uh their own local so thank you for that discussion and please do seek out the film Split Jury. If you want to find out more information, you can go to splitjury.com. If you are going to be in the Florida area, please come to the in-person screening, which will be part of a group of shorts uh, dealing with criminal justice issues called Justice Served. You can find out more information about Split Jury and all of the other shorts as a part of that program by going to peacefilmfest.org and checking those things out. Again, our in-person programming begins September 19th and runs through September 23rd. Our virtual programs begin September 25th and run through October the 1st. We thank you for listening and watching today's GLOW and we'll see you at the next one.